Hello everybody, Joseph Anderson here. I'm just actually uh, going through these three units that this uh, new property that we just picked up. Um, they just want me to actually just go through them and make sure each one is working correctly. Um, so far they don't have any issues um, downstairs. Uh, but I'm just going to go through them, make sure filters are changed, belts, whatever. You know, get filter size, belt size, um, check amps on the condensers, compressors, indoor blowers. So, uh, yeah, I'll show you exactly how I do things here and how I go through each one and just kind of write up the quote or whatever we need to do to repair them. So, All right, so here's the, the three that we have. It's a York. It's a five-ton York commercial package unit. It's a heat pump. Notice no uh, gas lines. So if it had a gas line, it would be a gas pack. But it, so without the gas lines, it's a heat pump. <clears throat> so go through this. We actually got two more right here. This one here was just actually changed out not too long ago. It's a brand new York. You notice the stickers are still on it. It's brand new. Um, so that one's probably going to be in pretty good shape. Um, and then we have one that was just like the back room. This one's actually for their front office, like their lobby area. So it's the same thing as the one I showed you. So another five-ton York um, package unit. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is uh, I'll show you. Um, this is where this compartment is where your compressor is. This one here is where your filters are. Um, this is your supply. That one's your return air. So, you know, we'll be checking those two. Make sure we get the 20 degree split because that's what you need. Um, so if it's six, uh, 75 inside the room, 55 degree supply. So um, this is all your electrical, probably your contactors, stuff like that. Uh, of course, your condenser fan motors up there, compressors inside. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go through all that. I'll show you exactly what I do. Um, for you guys, you know, just starting off and need an idea how to to approach uh, commercial equipment. Um, yeah, it's just little things that'll help you help you throughout, so you don't miss anything. Um, main thing is uh, uh, taking amp draws on your uh, condenser fan, your indoor blower that's inside. Um, check your filters. Um, see what else. Oh, make sure like if they have outside dampers like this, make sure they're closed or not, you know, open all the way or closed all the way. Um, and then here, just make sure, you know, take your temperature with temperature probes. Um, make sure you're you're getting it close to a 20 degree split, 20, 22, be all right. Um, and then um, when you go through all the electrical part, just make sure your contactors are good. Not, nothing's pivot or burnt. Um, wires are not burnt up. Um, check your caps, your run caps, your dual caps, whatever it has. Uh, yeah, so this one's doing good. Got you running. All right. So, let's see here. I always do this test. Make sure your fans are spinning the right direction. If they're spinning out, that means they're rejecting heat. So, if, so I always do the glove, glove method. So if it's pushing it up, like it's doing, see, pushing it up. So then you know it's uh, spinning the right direction. If it sucks it down, sucks it down, that means it's going in the wrong direction. So you have to change the rotation. Rotation is if you, I don't know if you can see, there's two wires right here that are just plug-ins and you just switch the two. And that's all you have to do. Um, I'll actually show, show that to you once I uh, shut this thing down. I'll show you the wires and how you go, go ahead and switch the rotation of your fans. But yeah, this one's doing okay. Yeah, I always like doing the, the glove method. This is actually works pretty good. So to tell you right up front if it's spinning the right direction or not. See, see how this one's like blowing it up? Okay. Blowing it up, so it's rejecting the heat. That's what we want. I mean, you know, now, I mean, I actually could see it and, you know, no, but you know, for beginners and stuff like that, it's just something you can add to your, you know, your testing. Just, you know, take your work gloves and just put it on top. Oh yeah, okay, it's spinning the right direction. Just a quick one. Um, so yep, once I open up these panels, um, I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be looking at and what we look for, and, and we'll go from there. Alright, so I got it actually all opened up now. Um, this is your compressor compartment. Um, so I would check, you know, um, why it's running. Um, you know, I would not open these ones quite yet, but I'm just going through each one. 
this one here I'll check amps you take your amp probe that sits around this and you check and see what your amps are and then you can actually look on your nameplate and they'll tell you your amps on your nameplate on your compressor so you can actually know okay if it's 40 amps 30 amps 20 amps whatever it is um, if it's over it then you know the compressors um, over amping so it's gonna fail at, at one time um, but if it's under you know say if it's 20 and you're reading 15 14 you're actually doing pretty good um, so yeah you would check the three wires that are coming out your red your black and your blue back here it comes into your compressor I would do that um, same thing with your motor up there that's your condenser fan motor and your blade I would test the same thing check your amps on your on your black right here going on um, just see what your amps are on that motor um, next thing I would do is actually here put it this way I would actually check your you know electrical department okay. um, here's your contactors um, I'm thinking this one is for your compressor and these two are for your indoor blower and your condenser fan and then you got your transformer you got a control board back there um, you got a terminal block there for all your um, that's where your thermostat all ties in your red is for your power your 24 volts the yellow is your cooling the G is your green so that's your fan and then you have what else you got here? Oh, okay um, you got O that's your reversing valve and then you have black as your common that's common going back to your thermostat so then it actually runs without batteries when you have the 24 and your common hooked up to your thermostat it doesn't need batteries um, okay uh, yeah I would check see how this one's kind of discolored I would probably write it up as a uh, concern but not something that needs to be done right away but just for future stuff um, check the colors of it if it's uh, see how it's kind of gold but if you looked inside and it was black in there like it was getting hot or getting burnt then you may want to go ahead and change that out request to change it out um, so far so far it looks okay um, in there that's your indoor coil that's your coil that actually um, supplies your air your your uh, your air comes across it it cools it to 50 degrees whatever 40 degrees and and supplies it to your building so you want to make sure this part is very clean um, if there's a filter change it uh, on this one here see it's actually open there's the coil there this one actually goes into your suite um, so um, they probably have a 20 by 20 or two 20 by 20s for this unit um, it's probably up in the suite up in the ceiling so um, like I said before this is your return air that's your supply air this is your indoor blower this is actually what blows the air into the building um, I would check on this you know that's your run cap there whatever Mike referred is if it's a 5 a 10 a 15 a 20 just check it um, see how close it is if it's low change it um, request to change it up because sooner or later it's gonna overheat and it's not gonna even work um, so yeah um, that's your indoor blower I'll do the same thing you could take amps on on the wires on this one here would be the blue the black and the red um, check it just make sure you're actually uh, the amps look pretty good you actually can look on the nameplate on your let's see here that one but there's a nameplate oh right here you can actually look on the nameplate and it'll tell you what your uh, indoor blower amps is supposed to be uh, indoor ID blower you're supposed to read 3.5 amps if you notice 3.5 amps that's for your ID blow so that's your indoor blower and the bottom one is OD that's your outdoor fan so that your outdoor fan is your condenser fan so do the same thing on that one too check amps uh, I recommend if it's the first time going to a building uh, I would request you know uh, recommend changing or uh, cleaning the coils this is your condenser coil so it's very important if this thing's plugged in any way and it can't reject the heat right this is going to overheat the compressor and shut it off so I would recommend just um, coil cleaning the, the unit um, every time this is our, our first time coming here so I'm gonna actually recommend changing or uh, cleaning the clothes on the condenser and also the indoor one um, the evaporator coil uh, this one here 
So, um, and then I'm probably going to recommend changing out that contactor. And also, too, I noticed when this was running that that motor was getting extreme, extremely hot. Um, so I was going to take amps on it, but that's another thing I'm going to actually uh, have replaced. Um, recommend replacing that and also too if you notice let me see you can see it somebody actually uh, wire nutted it right there together so that's a sign that either it, it broke or got caught or something with the fan so um, I'm gonna recommend just changing it out completely and uh, cap to go with it um, it's probably a five or something I gotta look um, but yeah see how it's wire nutted down there the orange one yeah, it looks like somebody's been tampering with this thing. So, and it's actually running really hot. When it's, once I touched it, I was like, "Oh man, yeah, it's extremely hot." So yeah, I'm gonna actually um, recommend changing that out. So that's pretty much what I would do. Um, check your pressures. Um, this is your high and your low, so your red and your blue. Just check your pressures. Make sure your pressures look fine. Um, outdoor temp to, you know, you gotta remember we're looking for a. Uh, this is, I believe, let me see. Let me show what refrigerant this is. This is, where are you at? Oh, R22. If you notice right there, R22 takes 10 pounds of R22. So on your gauges, you would check R22. Um, Remember, it's going to be your pressures are going to be your low side about 65, your high side about 250. Um, you want it um, a 40 degree evap temp on there. So wherever that 65 line is, where the gauge is, you're going to see 40. Um, so you got to have 40, 40 degree evap temp on there. Um, yeah, I would just pretty much yeah just clean the inside of these coils, make them look good. Um, Maybe glue down these pads right here so then it's not flapping or actually cover up the hole. Um, yeah, like I said, clean the indoor coil, the outdoor coil. Um, once I get all this buttoned up, I'm going to check the supply on this and everything. Um, check, yeah, like I said, check amps on your indoor, your outdoor. And that's pretty much it. Um, you know, you should be able to tell um, exactly what's working and what's not. Um, you know, if you ever come up to a unit, compressor's running, fan, the indoor fan is running, but your, your condenser's not running, it's either a cap or a motor, so, um, same thing too, if, uh, you come in, your coil's iced up, your indoor coil's iced up, your condenser fan is running, your compressor is running, but your indoor blower's not running, most likely it's a cap or your motor's bad. Um, so those are just signs, if it's frozen coil, it's either... A dirty filter a real dirty filter or an indoor blower that's that's messed up the cap or the motor itself um, same thing with a condenser fan but the opposite if it's um, going off on high head high head pressure that means your condenser fan isn't working or the cap is bad or both <laughs> so because what would happen is your compressor will overheat shut off it won't be cooling the, the space so um, yeah, let me go ahead and button this thing up. Um, just go a few, uh, go through a few things. Just make sure we're good on this one, and I'm buttoning it up, and um, I'll show you show you what we're supposed to see on supply and returns, and we should be good. All right, so I got my gauges on. Um, so far, yeah, we're reading 65 or about a little over 250. If you notice it's at the green. See where the green it says 40. That's a 40 degree evap coil temp. So that's exactly what you're looking for. Um, once it gets lower, then it get it lower. Like uh, you know, if it gets around 32, you know, anything of, uh, below 32 degrees is going to freeze. So your coil is going to freeze up. So it has to be at 40. That's ideal. That's actually the best best spot for it. Um, on this type of R22, so it's 65 over 250. Eh, this one's kind of bouncing around a little bit. But yeah, it's staying around 250. It just might be my gauge is acting up or something, but it's actually around 250, so we're looking good there. Let's check our supply. Oh yeah, our supply. I don't know if you can see that. It's about 50 degrees. 49 degree supply air coming out. So 
yeah you just have to stick it inside there um, if there's not a hole just use a cell tapper um, drill it right through the center of this and then you can put your probe in there and actually get the temperature off of it directly so you know so all right so yeah we're reading pretty good on that supply See, see if I can get our return. Let that sit for a second. Let's check our gauges. Yeah, so yeah, it's staying around 40 on the bap temp. So yeah, 65, 70. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, we're okay. It's a pretty hot day. Um, it's about 100 degrees here in Vegas, so it's about right. And it's closer to 300. Let's see if I can shift the fan. Alright, fan's working good. Alright. So yeah, just keep an eye on your gauges. Um, like I said, that's pretty much what I'll go through. Um, just check every component while it's running. And then I'll check my pressures, check my return and my supply temps. Make sure we're good. Yeah, so yeah, we're looking pretty good. I think it's on there to about 78. 78 and I had what 59 so yeah 78 and it would be around 58 would be a, a 20 yeah so yeah we're looking looking pretty good and if I kept it in there longer it probably would uh, drop down even more I think actually the space is actually colder than that so um, but yeah I mean ideal that's what you're looking for 20 degree split So yeah, we're doing good. Yeah, it's actually dropping. I put it right back in there again. So I'll let it sit in there for probably five minutes or so. Yeah, pressures haven't changed. Staying about the same. Head pressure went up just a little bit, but not much. As long as it's, you know, close to 300, under 300, you'd be just fine. Yeah, because I think the high pressure switch on this one is actually can go up to 450. So once it hit 450, then I'll shut off that compressor. Yeah, we're actually looking pretty good. Yeah, so that's exactly what I do on each one of them. Um, this was the first one. I'll go through the next ones. Um, the other ones are the same exact units pretty much. So, uh, so yeah, I won't go through all that one. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, exactly what I'm going to be doing on the next next two. Just verifying that everything's working and then write up some repairs. And I got a few things on this one I got to do, and that should be it. So that should be it for today on this one. I'm um, just going to continue going through the other two just like I did on this one and um, write up what I need to write up and that's about it. So um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave at the bottom in my comment section and subscribe to my channel. Thanks guys for watching. Bye.